Hi everyone, my name is Kieran Corcoran. I'm head of the TU Dublin School of Creative Arts and I'd like to welcome you all to our first ever online open day. In this short session, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our school and you're also going to get a chance to listen and hear from our program chairs. They're going to tell you all about the fantastic programs we offer in art, design and cultural theory. And we're going to have a few of our students uh, with us who are going to let you know what life is really like in our school. Uh, firstly, TU Dum School of Creative Arts. We're located on the new Grange Gorman campus of Technological University Dublin. We're a very large specialist art, design and cultural theory institution. We have over 600 students and we provide practical art and design courses and cultural theory courses at BA, MA and PhD levels. We have a very large and growing cohort of postgraduate students and we like to think of ourselves uh, as a school which is run and in which education is delivered by specialist practitioners. All our staff are very well-known artists, designers and theoreticians. We are about to move into a new building and this is where I'm speaking to you from. It's called the East Quad. It's been some years in the planning and what we now have here is a 17,000 square meter creative art space in which we will have new studios, new workshops, new laboratories, and we'll also share this space, this amazing space, with our colleagues from the TU Dublin Conservatoire and our colleagues from the TU Dublin School of Media and the School of Law, Languages and Social Sciences. It's going to be an amazing experience for you with over 3,000 people who are all involved in some form or other in arts and culture, all working under the same room. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you here in September and watching you thrive and enjoy the incredible facilities and incredible people you're going to be working with here over the next four years. Hello everybody, my name's Neville Knott and I'm the course coordinator for interior design. So let me tell you a little bit about interior design in TU Dublin. It's a four year honours BA course and we attract a great range of creative students who want to work in different areas of interior design. And when you participate in the course, you're going to study everything from domestic interiors the whole way through to commercial interiors. So designing things like hotels and retail units, everything that you can possibly imagine, we'll design it. So our students end up going into really interesting practices from large architectural practices where they're the interior designers to smaller, more intimate practices. We have a lot of our graduates who's also who've also started their own businesses. And very famous interior designers have come from our course who've included Roisin Lafferty and Lauren Martin. We have graduates like Paul Finnegan, who worked for Mole Architects, who've won some of the large architectural awards in Ireland over the years. So we appeal to this range of students who really have a passion for interiors and want to work in any area from the large interior practices right through to the local kitchen centre. So maybe we'll go over and ask Brenda, tell us a little bit about VizCon. Thanks, Neville. So my name is Brenda Dermody and I'm the programme chair of the BA Design Visual Communication, which is a four year programme that runs uh, in TU Dublin. Um, so we're a, a very uh, broad based uh, graphic design visual communication program. Visu uh, as we know, visual communication is a multidisciplinary field with hundreds of subfields and specialisms. And our experience of being in the world is mediated by design spaces, objects, services and experience. And so design is one of the most influential forces uh, in our lives. And as graduates, you're entering design at a time when um, it's been redefined as a, a very improvisational medium. It's rooted in instinct, ingenuity and resourcefulness. So it's no longer kind of tied purely to the kind of commercial and industrial role that it's occupied uh, up until the last number of years. So it's a very exciting time for design. Um, in terms of the skills students would gain from studying visual communication, we're interested in the holistic development of our students. So you learn how to research, to develop your analytical skills, your critical thinking. Uh, we look for our graduates to be socially engaged, able to respond to uh, complex kind of international and, and local issues, to engage with communities and professional organizations, as well as the design industry and commerce. Um, to think environmentally, to think lo locally, to think globally, 
Um, and then we also offer a, a very strong foundation in design principles. So as we know, visual communication is a language that encompasses all textual, visual uh, and environmental media and technologies. So we would have a strong emphasis on learning visual principles such as typography, color, composition, drawing, printmaking, photography, moving image, type design. We do things like book design. Uh, there's a lot of filmmaking, installation, exhibition design, campaigns, branding, visual identity. So it's it's really, really interesting. And then the university offers full access to the Adobe Creative Cloud. We teach all of that software to you in the early years of the program. And there's options for things like 3D printing, laser cutting and more. Hello, my name is Ronald McRae. I'm the program chair for Fine Art. And um, we, the BA in Fine Art is a four year uh, degree. Um, all the staff that you would uh, be dealing with, uh, many of them are practicing artists and practicing researchers in the uh, theory and history um, modules. Um, we think there is a future, a great future for fine art. I think there's been a real renewed appreciation for the role of arts in society, um, both for the individual participants and its society at large. And we think it's, you know, a really interesting and valuable way of life. Um, we think art is a way of thinking about and responding to the situations and conditions of um, uh, uh, life and society today. So we think that's a really sort of valuable role we have. Mm -hmm. The type of students that are interested in art are really diverse. They come from all walks of life, from previous experiences, all ages, backgrounds, identities. Um, we have uh, students that are curious, independent, uh, questioning. Interest in the combination of theoretical and hands-on practical work uh, is a really important aspect of our course. The skills that you would learn would be in the first year you would do sort of foundational kind of uh, blocks as we call them in painting, sculpture, printmaking, digital media uh, and photography and so on. And then as you move through the course you start to develop your own independent practice under the guidance of um, the staff. Very much uh, uh, it's a really open course where you can sort of really develop your own ideas with whatever skills, materials um, you 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 choose to 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 use. Um, the career paths are diverse. In one way, it's the starting point for working as a professional visual artist, but um, it also is a, a sort of a foundation for. Uh, our graduates work in all sorts of different areas in education, in the broader cultural sector, in museums and galleries, and in education, community education, secondary level education. And in TU Dublin, we also have research pathways which go all the way up to PhD in artistic research and practice based research. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, you know, an introduction to fine art at TU Dublin. So, hello, um, my name is uh, Dr. Mary Ann Bulger and I'm the former programme chair of the uh, BA in Creative Industries and Visual Culture, which we call Civic, which I think sums it up quite well. So I suppose we like to think of Civic as a programme which is an arts degree in an art and design school. So it has the flexibility, it has the access to a wide range of um, kind of introductions to different areas within the art field and um, within cultural studies, within media. Um, but it is rooted in um, a shared experience with practice based students. So you'll share classes with fine art students, with students in interior design, visual communication design, photography, um, and you'll also share a premises with them. You'll be working in our new East Quad building in Grange Gorman in our kind of creative hub there. So the, there are two main pathways in the uh, civic program. One is for those who are kind of interested in a career in visual culture, perhaps working as curators, working in museums, working as researchers, perhaps going on to further education in those areas. And then the other pathway is um, perhaps, perhaps a little bit more practical, management focused, uh, pe people who might want to go into arts admin, to work as creative managers, to work in um, various aspects of cultural policy. So in our first year, the idea is that we give you a good grounding in all of those kind of different areas. So you have modules that range from all sorts of things, from Irish history to gender studies, to cultural policy, to um, visual and critical uh, communication design. You will even have modules in web design. So you've got a, this really well-rounded basic training in um, 
various aspects of um, visual culture and uh, creative industries. Then in second and third year, you choose your pathway and you decide which of those routes you want to take. Um, and within that, there is a really strong focus on real world engagement. So you can choose to do work placement in one of our many work placement partners. We um, have placements in Glasnevin um, Museum. We've had placements in the GAA Museum in Croke Park. We've had uh, very strong relationships with Hugh Lane, with IMA, with um, Dublin City Council with the Little Museum of Dublin um, and now new um, partnerships are coming on stream with with uh, the OPW, with the Pierce Museum, with um, the, uh, the IFI and with many other cultural industry bodies in, in the country. So it's a really fantastic opportunity to to actually find yourself um, embedded in the cultural industries in Ireland. Um, and those partnerships have gone on to create really strong um, destinations for our alumni. And so we now have a whole generation of um, uh, graduates who are working in the cultural industries um, across the country and uh, abroad as well. And those then allow us um, a direct kind of conti continuity uh, for our current graduates to, to meet with them. So um, in the final year, then all students will work on a public facing project. So everybody will be putting on an event, whether an individual cultural project of your own, whether that might be um, uh, putting on an exhibition with some of your colleagues from fine art, organising a music event with some of our colleagues from the conservatoire um, or perhaps organising a theatrical performance or perhaps contributing to a group. Uh, event like the forthcoming Talking Points, which is a seminar being organised by the current third years, which is going to be taking place um, hand in hand with IMA um, towards the end of this semester. So there's absolutely loads of opportunities to get your hands dirty and get involved in um, the world of uh, creative industries and visual culture in Ireland. So um, give us, drop us a line. We'd love to see you. Thanks. Kerry, do you want to tell us something about visual merchandising? Hello, my name is Kerry Meekin and I'm the programme chair of the BA Visual Merchandising and Display at the TU Dublin. And it's the only programme of its kind on the island of Ireland. And in fact, it's only one of six programmes in the world that is recognised as a centre of excellence by the British Display Society. So uh, we, 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 it's, it's a three year course. And what is the future of visual merchandising? Well, actually, Contrary to popular opinion, it's very, very exciting. There's, going to, there's a lot of very interesting things happening in retail at the minute, and that includes providing very exciting physical environments. Uh, students have gone on from the programme and uh, got international roles. One of our students is the head of international creativity in Calvin Klein. Another student is the global creative director at Topshop. So we've got students leaving Ireland, traveling. We also have students working in a lot of the large um, visual merchandising uh, teams in Ireland. Uh, we have two work placement um, segments to the program. One is in second year. It's a two week work placement. And in third year, um, our students are on placement for two days a week throughout the academic year. So they're in places like Brown Thomas, Arnott's, Ikea, Avoca. And that placement is linked with a major project that they do at the in the second semester of the final year, where they actually install a display or an in-store display in their industry placement. So that's really, really uh, very rewarding, both for the placement provider and for the student. So uh, we are a mix of practical classes. So you learn practical abilities, how to make props, um, how to come up with concepts, how to design, and you physically install window displays throughout the uh, two years that you're on the campus. Uh, you also learn other um, things like SketchUp, B-Ray and CAD. So computer program based, you also do design history and we do theory, you do communications and you do a little bit of business just in case you want to at some stage open up your own company. So the staff are practitioners. So we um, have worked in industry, so we've got a lot of practical experience. And um, what can I say? It's just a, a very uh, interesting uh, program that can take you down a lot of different paths. This Thursday is graduation. 
So we've got something like 7,000 students graduating this week. Um, and it's really exciting for us because it's our first PhD graduate from the course. So Siobhan Doyle, who's now um, a curator working in the National Museum in Collins Barracks, she started off doing the BA in Civic and then went on to do her PhD with us. Um, and she's also um, part time teaching with us and teaches on the MA in visual culture. TU Dublin, you can go from BA to MA to PhD in all of the creative arts disciplines. And Siobhan is a brilliant example of somebody who's had her kind of toe in each of those areas. She's great. And I think that that raises the question, uh, and why do people stay with us? Because um, I think, Marianne, the thing about it is that they have such a good experience yeah. at undergrad level and they really enjoy, I think, the interactions. There's so many aspects to it. For example, in third year, they can they can go away on Erasmus. Yes, of course. With loads yeah. of, of colleges around Europe, and then we have relationships with colleges all over the world as well, and our 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 college trips as well. I think they're yeah. really interesting, just as a way of the students to get to know us better and the, yeah. and each other. And I think they're great fun. Yeah. So, um, and I know Kerry, you go away uh, on a number of trips. Yeah, well, actually, we just had a very interesting morning. This morning I've been to New York and London, uh, virtually may I add, so students had to do research on windows that have been installed for Christmas uh, and I, I have to say I actually stopped them at one stage and I said guys you know what this is actually work, sorry, this is meant to be work, it was such a fantastic morning, we really really enjoyed it, so I've seen amazing things in Bonwit Teller. Uh, in Saxa Fifth Avenue, I've seen incredible windows of Harvey Nichols, and um, yeah. So, and also we did we we did an analysis, obviously, of Dublin windows. So I've actually had a really good morning just traveling the world virtually. Now we would normally physically be in London, so that was why we decided to do it was to kind of it made up slightly for missing that trip. But normally we have a fantastic trip to London every year, and we go and see the mannequin manufacturers, and we go and see all the windows, and so. Uh, yeah, and that would have been last week. So we we we've we, we made up for it slightly. And it, and it is about building connections, yeah. it, you know, yeah. isn't it? With with industry, uh, I know yeah. that you know, particularly at, at our end of year exhibitions, we get uh, so many of our friends and colleagues coming back from industry, and now so many of the leaders in industry are graduates that they come back to us to actually look for uh, graduates to employ, True. which is just yeah. really yeah. exciting for us. Yeah. Yeah, see that. I think Neville as well for in fine art, I think we're sort of really embedded within the artistic scene of the city and, you know, our students will do like exhibitions uh, in spaces throughout the city and make connections with the curators and the institutions. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, staff are also exhibiting and active within the, uh, the city scene. So I think this kind of embeddedness, uh, these relationships and networks continue. Yeah. We're constantly sort of meeting our graduates in when they come back and show and they do different things. They go away and they come back. A good example would be Kevin Gaffney, who uh, studied with us a few years ago, went away to study in London, um, got a Sky Arts Award, uh, has been sort of showing extensively in Asia and is kind of coming back now to do a sort of PhD in Ulster University. So people kind of often start uh, in the BA in fine art and then find all sorts of different paths uh, uh, and journeys beyond that. So I think that's really interesting. Our uh, in visual communication, our graduates would uh, very often work for, well, actually have founded a lot of the kind of key design studios in, in Dublin, such as Unthink, Detail Design, Image Now, and Dynamo. And they would work, our graduates would work in places like Atelier and Red Dog. And then we have a lot of students who travel. So we've Stephen McCarthy, who started in detail and then has gone on to work uh, and is now the head of design for gov.uk, government uh, services. And he has led a project to bring 300 government services together under one kind of website umbrella, which has been award winning. We've Neve Sharkey, who uh, is an illustrator and author. Uh, of Henry Hugglemonster, which we all know from the Brown Bag uh, TV series. We have Emma Grattan, who interned for Annie Atkins and went on to design for film and television, uh, The Dairy Girls and Penny Dreadful, as my two series people would know. Uh, we have Paul Woods, who went to work in Berlin for uh, Eden Speakerman and is now the founder and CEO of the LA office uh, of Eden Speakerman. We have graduates working in New York. Stephen McCarthy, as well, is another 
graduate of ours who worked in RTE and then went on to work in the BBC and is now an independent film director. Um, we have Johnny Kelly. We have also Oscar award winning uh, graduate Zone Duffy for The Missing Scarf. So it's really diverse in terms of where you can work and the kinds of things that you can do. Um, and, and the last thing I suppose people would probably be interested in is there's a, a huge area of experience and interaction design and, and our designers uh, work in and are involved in leading um, in-house design and innovation consultancies uh, such as Fjord in Accenture and then Deloitte Digital Services uh, who offer international digital strategy uh, services. And, I, and I, think, I think the reason why so many of us are able to, to talk about our students, our graduates, is that they constantly come back to us and keep in contact with us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably because we're able to build a really strong relationship with them because we don't have huge numbers in each year. We've got a very personal way of dealing with each of the projects. The students get to know us and they really benefit from all the collective knowledge from practice based knowledge as well as academic based knowledge. And I think that's really important. Yeah. I think I really value Neville, the sort of uh, small numbers allow a sort of an individual attention. So you can really kind of do your own, sort of develop something really unique, you know, that you're not part of a huge group. So you will get the support to sort of develop, express your individual voice, which I think is sort of really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think as well, another aspect, um, and we, we've, we're, it's the same individual communication, the staff are all practitioners, and we're also connected with international professional bodies. So I would be uh, involved with the International Society of Typographic Designers and uh, represent Ireland uh, in all of their international activities. And then we have staff members, Marianne is involved with A Type I, which is another uh, international typographic association so we're all the time kind of aware of and involved in what's happening internationally within our fields uh, and active in that yeah I think that's another nice thing to say actually as well is that we um we're all kind of collaborating together we all work together so yeah. Brenda, you and I have worked together on projects, you know, Neville and I have worked together on projects and there isn't that same kind of silo about theory and practice as there might be in other places. So we all work together on the MA programme. We all work together, you know, in studio. We know what everybody is doing, again, because we have the small numbers so that we have a sense of community in the programme, but even also a sense of community in the school so that everybody knows who everybody is. And therefore, you can go to Neville if you're having an, a question about your exhibition panels and visual merchandising, or you can come and ask me if you need a reference for a book in fine art. We work together and that, that makes it a happier place to be. Yeah. We you know, have, sorry, I, I think that's even going to increase even more and in a really exciting way when we move to the East Quad, because it's not only going to be at the Dublin School of Creative Arts, but we're going to be with the other fantastic schools, you know, uh, music and drama, you, you know. So I think like think of all the opportunities that are going to be there for um, the really interesting cross-discipline projects, you know, like the, like the one that we did a few years ago, the opera project. And I think things like that are going to happen more. They're going to happen much easier. And uh, students from all the other, other disciplines are going to see what other students are doing. So I think that's now going to be a, a really interesting and exciting environment for us to go into. Uh, I think, Kerry, I think that when we get back, you know, post-COVID, when we get back into the East Quad, I think we have this new appreciation for our studio culture in the mm -hmm. sense that like all the programs are really invested in this idea of the studio, which is a, you know, a place to sort of, you have an individual workspace, but it's also a shared collective space. You're learning from fellow students, you're hanging out, um, you're kind of, uh, you're, you're developing a sort of a, a group, a peer group that often will be with you like 20 years later, you will, there'll be people from your class that will be people that you'll be, friends or competitors with or, you know, uh, part of your scene, you know, so I think that, um, yeah, I think that we're really invested and really believe in this idea of sort of an active studio. So we're really looking forward to getting back in there. So if you want to come to TU Dublin and work with staff like us, be surrounded by really engaging students who become lifelong friends with great career opportunities, contact us and come to TU Dublin. We'd love to see you.
My name is John Walsh and I'm Assistant Head of School at TU Dublin School of Creative Arts. We're joined here by a selection of our students, mostly I think from third year, but from all of our programmes. I'm Jack, I'm third year in Creative Industries and Visual Culture. I'm Megan, I'm third year as well uh, in Visual Communications. And I'm Senan and I am in third year in Visual Merchandising. I'm Anne, I'm in fourth year of Interior. My name is Roxana and I'm doing a fine art course and I'm in third year. I'm Eden and I'm in third year fine art as well. Is there anything um, that made you specifically choose interior design or what made you pick the program? When I applied it was the technical school and it was going to become the university so I that was kind of something that made me choose it. Then um, I was going up and putting my portfolio in and stuff. Uh, I met a few people that were going to become my lecturers. I didn't know them at the time obviously but um, everyone was just so friendly and there was just such a nice vibe on campus and such a vast amount of things that you can do after VizCom. There's so many different pathways that you can take so I thought that was interesting as well. What I like about my course is that it's a mixed media and when I was applying for it I knew that I would be studying many things and that was what I wanted because I actually I was not sure what I wanted to do as a career and I was like I just knew I was interested in art. I actually did a PSU course because I didn't think I'd be able to get in through like doing a portfolio during the leaving cert. So I took a year out and originally I was going to go, I wasn't going to do this course. Like I wasn't thinking about it, but then I went to the open day and the portfolio submission day here and I literally like fell in love. When I went into the print studio, I was like, oh my God, like the facilities there were so good. VM or Vision Merchandising is um, a three year course. In first year, you start off with homewares and you learn the basics, just kind of, of positioning and how to kind of work in, a, say, a store or a window. And then second year, you move on to fashion with a little bit of homewares as well. And then also in third year, you have both as well. So you also you have physical, so practical, you will have working in windows, doing displays, but you also have um, working on CAD, so the likes of SketchUp and uh, making digital models of Windows as well. Kind of fell in love with the course by kind of researching it. Yeah, so in second year, you have a two-week placement. And in third year, we have it twice a week for the whole year. You're able to really get a good grasp with um, all the other disciplines that you're working in for different classes. So stuff like the uh, theory seminars about narrative and visual culture or gender and design, as well as doing uh, media theory and business management can do like I said before business management you can do um, PR and you can work uh, in some journalist aspects some screenwriting some um, copywriting as well for the likes of museums or blogs something that's great about the course that you get to meet so many different types of lecturers and interact and get to know so many different types of people one thing I want to say actually to the people who are looking at the course maybe to look at the modules because I thought coming in that it was kind of more styling and stuff like that but I got a bit of a rude awakening when we started using CAD then. The course is brilliant for that kind of thing like it's very technical amazing you come out of it just you feel like you're much more prepared to take on kind of architectural stuff. I did a PLC in um, Clash to Eda in Finglas so I had originally applied in sixth year and I think I only got like 200 points in my portfolio because I was really focused on the leave insert at that point. But then um, when I did my portfolio, like the jump in, unbelievable. And I was just so much more prepared coming in as well. If you're thinking of doing a portfolio, definitely, absolutely do it. It's just, it's the best choice I ever made. I think for all creative arts, you need to really be clued in with what's going on in the world and trying to figure out like... I felt that I developed uh, teamwork s skills hugely. A lot of it, uh, a lot of our practical classes is team-based and you'll be paired with a different person or different groups and it's really nice to work with different people. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you're choosing your program now and you're not sure what you want to do, it's not a life that decision. Like sometimes you get to know what you want in the middle of your course. Sometimes it's at the end of your course. It's just a long process of discovering yourself. Creative industries and visual culture, you find that it's not a big class. Like it's only about 25, 30 people. So it's about the same size as like your secondary school classes. 
So in the same way where you wanted to get to know everyone in secondary school, you should do the same with college. Second year in fine art, you do a group exhibition show, but it's the first one you pop, you do like out in the world. It's in Temple Bar Gallery and Studios. And in it, you like everyone works together to create this group show that's really cohesive. And we all curate it together, install it together, like promote it. And you just learn like really hands on experience with that. In TU, that you're learning from people who have maybe 15, 20 years experience, if not more. They have hands on immersive experience in the field. So that's another really, really good aspect of TU Dublin as well that I found across all the courses. All of the lectures seem to be professionals in the field, which is brilliant.